When you do an online search about Ellen White, you're likely to come across videos and websites accusing her of being a false prophet. Critics of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, of which I'm a member, often do this to discredit our faith. They use Ellen White as a straw man argument, claiming that we derive our doctrines from her writings rather than the Bible, which is completely false. These critics believe that by discrediting her, they can undermine the Adventist church and its teachings. While some of Ellen White's prophecies about the second coming of Jesus might seem questionable at first glance, there are reasonable explanations for them, which I have discussed in a previous video. However, in this video, I want to follow up by highlighting the fulfilled prophecies of Ellen White, which are rarely mentioned. These fulfilled prophecies are one of the reasons I believe in her prophetic ministry, because many of her prophecies, visions, and claims have indeed come true. But before I do that, I'm helping my friend Sandra raise money to renovate a building in the Tatra Mountains in Poland for Adventist youth retreats. Sandra has been a youth volunteer for 15 years and she dreams that Adventist youth in Poland can have a place to engage in meaningful activities, form lasting friendships, and deepen their faith. This is also important for me since I live in Poland and have three daughters that are involved in Pathfinders. Please consider donating to her fundraiser to help make Sarah's dream a reality. Click on the link in the video description to read all about her fundraiser and donate today. Now back to my video. Number 1. The Fall of the Twin Towers Ellen White wrote about a vision or dream she had in 1901 in which she described what appears to be the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York City on 9-11. In her book, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, Ellen White wrote, On one occasion, when in New York City, I was in the night season called upon to behold buildings rising story after story toward heaven. These buildings were warranted to be fireproof, and they were erected to glorify the owners and builders. Higher and still higher these buildings rose, and in them, the most costly material was used. The scene that next passed before me was an alarm of fire. Men looked at the lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said they are perfectly safe. But these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. The fire engines could do nothing to stay the destruction. The firemen were unable to operate the engines. Many consider this dream or vision to be about the Twin Towers for a couple of reasons. First of all, Ellen White described the building she saw as rising story after story to heaven. In other words, they were massive high-rise buildings. And the Twin Towers were the highest buildings in New York City, spanning 110 stories at the time of their destruction. Ellen White said the buildings were believed to be fireproof in her vision. The Twin Towers were built with fireproof material, including metal, concrete, and spray-on asbestos. They also had a sprinkler system, fire alarms, and fire exits. But Ellen White stated the buildings were consumed as if they were made of pitch. Pitch is a highly flammable substance, and something made of pitch would burn quickly and intensely. And that's a fitting description of the destruction of the Twin Towers, because the combination of structural damage from the airplane impacts, the dislodging of fireproofing material, and the intense fires fueled by jet fuel led to a rapid and catastrophic failure of the buildings. The tower's collapse was sudden and complete. Much like how a structure made of pitch would be swiftly consumed by flames, leaving little behind. And then there's Ellen White's statement about the fire engines not being able to do anything to stay the destruction. The collapse of the Twin Towers created enormous debris fields that blocked streets and made it difficult or impossible for fire engines to move and position themselves effectively. In addition, many fire engines were destroyed or heavily damaged when the towers collapsed. And falling debris and subsequent dust clouds also rendered some equipment inoperable. And the destruction of infrastructure, including water mains, limited the ability of the engines to access water needed to fight the fires. What do you think? Does Ellen White's vision sound like she was talking about the Twin Towers destruction? Let me know in the comments down below. Number two, there would be two world wars. 
In 1861, Ellen White had a vision of two world wars separated by a little time of peace. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, she wrote, I was shown the inhabitants of the earth in the utmost confusion. There was war, bloodshed, want, privation, famine, and pestilence in the land. And as these things were without, God's people began to press together and cast aside their little difficulties. Self-dignity no longer controlled them. Deep humility took its place. Suffering, perplexity, and privation caused reason to resume its throne. And the passionate and unreasonable man became sane and acted with discretion and wisdom. My attention was then called from the scene. There seemed to be a little time of peace. Then the inhabitants of the earth were again presented before me, and everything was in the utmost confusion again. Strife, war, and bloodshed, with famine and pestilence, raged everywhere. Other nations were engaged in this confusion and war. War caused famine, want and bloodshed caused pestilence, and then men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. This is a fitting description of World War I and World War II. Both wars were characterized by unprecedented levels of violence, destruction, and loss of life on a global scale. In addition, Ellen White's vision predicted that the second war would involve more nations than the first, which is exactly what happened. Over 30 nations fought in World War I, but some 70 nations took part in World War II. She also spoke of a little time of peace between these conflicts. This corresponds to the interwar period between 1918 to 1939, where there was a temporary uneasy peace before the eruption of World War II. This period saw further efforts to prevent future conflicts such as the League of Nations, but ultimately the world was plunged back into war. She also spoke of famine and pestilence during these wars. In World War I and II, blockades destroyed infrastructure and disrupted agriculture led to severe food shortages and famines in various regions. The Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, which followed World War I, is an example of how war exacerbated pestilence. Number three, Protestants and Catholics will unite. Ellen White wrote in The Great Controversy, the Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. The Great Controversy was published in 1888, and at that time, it was unimaginable that Protestants would unite with Catholics because of the deep theological divisions, historical animosities, and widespread cultural and political hostility between the two groups. However, that all began to change in the mid-20th century with the rise of the ecumenical movement and significant events like the Second Vatican Council in 1962 to 1965, which sought to promote dialogue and cooperation between different Christian denominations. And today, some Protestant leaders speak very highly of the Pope, like Rick Warren, who even referred to Pope Francis as our new Pope after he was elected. It, authenticity, humility, Pope Francis is the perfect example of this. He is, a, he is doing everything right. You see, people will listen to what we say if they like what they see. And as, as our new Pope, he was very, very symbolic in, you know, his first mass with people of AIDS. I'm sorry, but Pope Francis is not my Pope. You know, the word Pope is derived from the Latin word Papa, which means father. And I only have one father, my father in heaven. As a Protestant, I believe that Christ alone is the head of the church, and my ultimate allegiance is to God as revealed in Scripture, not to any earthly religious leader. Some Protestants, like Kenneth Copeland, have even gone so far as to say that the protest is over. The joint declaration on the doctrine of justification 
or being born again and the righteousness of God is a document created and agreed to by the Catholic Church's Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity and the Lutheran World Federation in 1999. As a result of extensive ecumenical dialogue, it states that the churches now share a common understanding of our justification by God's grace through faith in Christ. To the parties involved, this essentially resolves the conflict over the nature of justification, which was at the root of the Protestant Reformation. The protest is over. The Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification states, Together we confess by grace alone in faith in Christ's saving work and not because of any merit on our own part, we are accepted by God and receive the Holy Spirit, who renews our hearts while equipping and calling us to good works. However, the Catholic Church doesn't really teach this. The Catholic Church teaches works-based salvation because it claims that you need to perform the sacraments to receive God's grace. The sacraments are channels for God's grace in the Catholic Church. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1129 states, The Church affirms that for believers, the sacraments of the New Covenant are necessary for salvation. Sacramental grace is the grace of the Holy Spirit given by Christ and proper to each sacrament. The Catholic sacraments include things like baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. And if the sacraments are necessary for salvation, that means performing the sacraments comes first before you can receive salvation in the Catholic Church. Also, notice it talks about sacramental grace. You may be wondering what that means, sacramental grace. I don't remember reading that in the Bible. That's because it's not in the Bible. And what it means is God's graces are imparted to Catholics after they perform the sacraments. For instance, the sacrament of baptism imparts spiritual rebirth, forgiveness of sins, and incorporation into the Catholic Church. Without baptism, a Catholic cannot receive salvation. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1257 states, The Lord Himself affirms that baptism is necessary for salvation. He also commands His disciples to proclaim the gospel to all nations and to baptize them. Baptism is necessary for salvation for those to whom the gospel has been proclaimed and who have had the possibility of asking for this sacrament. So the Catholic Church hasn't really changed to be more tolerant of Protestantism. It's Protestants who are changing to be more tolerant of the Catholic Church. Number four, meat eating causes cancer. Besides her visions and prophecies, Ellen White also provided health counsel that was ahead of her time. For example, in the Review and Herald and Adventist magazine, Ellen White stated in 1902, If meat eating was ever healthful, it is not safe now. Cancers, tumors, and pulmonary diseases are largely caused by meat eating. It wasn't until the 1980s, around 80 years later, that scientific research began to confirm Ellen White's claims. At that time, initial epidemiological studies began to suggest a link between high meat consumption, particularly red and processed meats, and increased cancer risk, especially colorectal cancer. This was confirmed in 2007 by the World Cancer Research Fund and in 2015 by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And today, this is practically common knowledge. I did a Google search asking, does meat eating cause cancer? And this is what the first result at the top of the page said. The World Health Organization has classified processed meats, including ham, bacon, salami, and frankfurts as a group one carcinogen known to cause cancer, which means that there's strong evidence that processed meats cause cancer. Eating processed meat increases your risk of bowel and stomach cancer. Number five, plant food is the best for health. In her book, The Ministry of Healing, she wrote grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet 
chosen for us by our Creator. These foods, prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible, are the most healthful and nourishing. The Ministry of Healing was published in 1905, but there are also other Ellen White quotes that go as far back as 1864 promoting a plant-based diet. It took a hundred years for science to confirm Ellen White's claims. In the 1970s and 80s, initial studies began to show the health benefits of a plant-based diet. Research indicated lower risks of heart disease, hypertension, and certain types of cancer among vegetarians compared to meat eaters. Then, one of the most comprehensive studies about nutrition and health called the China Study, which spanned 20 years from the early 80s to the 2000s, surveying 6,500 people across 65 rural countries in China, concluded that diets rich in plant foods were strongly associated with lower rates of chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, providing robust evidence of the significant health benefits of a plant-based diet. Ellen White made some incredible predictions and claims that are more than mere coincidence. She described events that matched the Twin Towers attacks, the Two World Wars, the Union of Catholicism and Protestantism, and provided health counsel ahead of her time. What other explanation can there be other than she was inspired by God? This is why I firmly believe that she had the gift of prophecy and enjoy reading her books. And I encourage you to check them out for yourself. Don't just go by what people post on the internet. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Do your own research. A good place to start is by reading her Conflict of the Ages series. This is a series of five books by Ellen White, which is basically like a commentary covering the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. These books offer profound insights into the character of God, the great controversy between good and evil, and the hope we have in Christ's ultimate victory. Click on the link in the video description to order your set today.